Just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am here with the big fella, Ryan Madison. What's going on, brother? Thanks for having me, Kempi. Nah, it's good, bro. It's good. Hey, we were talking about the shirt earlier, and it has played. It is really popping on the screen right now. We're looking. We've got our producer there. We pay him. <laughs> we pay him a million a year to do his job. He honestly makes three errors a day. <laughs> no, I, ju- I jest, I jest. Um, bro, how's the body feeling? You know, the season last year, it was still a good season. You finished in top three. Hey. Um, how's the body season feeling coming into this year? Yeah, good. Uh, we had a trial on the weekend, which mm. was um, it was good. It was fast. It was strong. Against a good quality side as well with Penrith. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. Body feels all right heading into the in, into the year. So we've got a week off now and then round one. Mm. It's your boys. So no, it should be good, bro. Oh, is it round one since Bronx? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. You told us as well recently. <laughs> God damn it. Um, so last year, like what, what was the year? So I, I thought you just played some really good footy and I thought it was a really consistent year for you. You know, throughout the year, there wasn't a, you, your, you didn't fluctuate between like a five game and a 10 game. You stayed pretty solidly up and towards the eights and that. What was the, what do you think the year was like for you personally? Yeah, I feel like um, we started the, the year off pretty, pretty good. Mm. And then COVID hit and then our team was just basically based on hard work behind the scenes. Mm. So we had Trent Elkin giving us programs and, we had like a skeleton system mm. that like some coaches were on it and some weren't and he wasn't on the skeleton system okay. but um he made sure that we had programs we had everything that we needed gym equipment he was working overtime yeah and he wow. wasn't even getting recognition for it wow yeah so and he was making sure that like running programs strength programs diets times when to do it when not to do it wow. everything for every single player every single much. player oh my god even like even the ones coming through that were like under twenties and stuff like that, that wow. the competition will stop for. So he played a massive role. Yeah. And then, um, so then that's a, that's what gave us the success coming back early on. So mm. we were going pretty well against sides that didn't take COVID well as well. Mm. So yeah, so our high performance team, so to speak, was mm. yeah, they were massive. They're for like us. the unsung heroes of the COVID break. I haven't even really thought about that, but they probably worked the most out of anyone in the club because the one thing that you can only do is your fitness while you're away you couldn't do like much ball skills you no. couldn't do much teamwork but your strength and conditioning and also he's going to do it from us in a satellite position like away from you guys yeah far out that's i haven't even thought about that but that, that's so true and i guess the teams that did come back fit the strength and conditioning coaches they don't they're fucking they pay holy moly yeah yeah. because you've obviously come back killing it um and so for you personally like did you feel like this was your best year so far or has have you had other better years or um well statistically going off stats this has been my better year well, yeah last year was my better year mm. um but i feel like there's there's so much more to like so much more potential mm. and that's a good thing under brad he's just always thinking all right we've done this and like what's next mm. that's why i really enjoy playing under brad okay and um like even going through covid just to mention brad as well he was just constantly Zoom calling the boys, oh, like really? making sure everyone's cool. Wow. It wasn't about footy. What are you guys up to? Just mm. making sure everyone's sweet. So, Did you yeah. do big uh, Zoom chats with all the boys? No, it was hard to get all the boys on. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. they'd done groups of, um, groups of four. Who was the Zoom MVP? Oh, Penny Terrapo. Oh, really? He was the funniest thing. <laughs> he, was out, where was, he was out fishing or something. He and was Zooming? Out, and he's got his Zoom <laughs> thing there, and, he, and everyone's meant to be mic'd up, yeah, yeah. Uh, but put on mute. Yeah. He's on a loud, and you can just hear his dingy going, <laughs> <laughs> and no one can hear anyone. Everyone's like, can you tell Barry to mute? Oh my God. And he wouldn't be able to probably hear you either. Oh, yeah, he's just fishing. He's having a good, a good time, bro. So yeah, that was always a good laugh. How good is that? Yeah. On the Zoom call with your NRL club and you're out fishing. Fishing. Must oh, love it. it was the best. It was the best. Um, and so, so coming into finals, well, what do you think it was? Because like from outside looking in, it looked like at the start of the year, you looked aggressive, you looked confident, you looked like you knew you had the tools to dominate another side physically, especially in your forward pack. And then towards the end of the year, it seemed like you still had the aggression, but it, it just from the outside looking in, it looked like you were not as not working as well in tandem. That's what it seemed like. It could be wrong. What, what did it feel like as you know your form as a team started to struggle towards the end of the year? Yeah, I feel like, um, well, COVID played a, a mental impact on, on a lot of boys. Mm. And when you're going well and you're living at home but you can't really do much and then you've got the media kind of getting in people's ears saying such like paracon yeah. attack such yeah. and such and we kind of we changed we changed our focus a bit internally yeah. we went from 
focusing on the, on our defense mm. then probably letting the the outside noise probably get amongst the boys yeah and, yeah and we try to change our attack and mm. where we should have just like we'll, we'll still we'll still winning games mm. whether you're winning game by two points or six yeah, points or 100%. 40 points a win's a win absolutely and, and defense um, is the key and defense is key mm. and that's that's a that's a focus that we've kind of learned from so to speak mm. and yeah like defense defense is king yeah oh you know absolutely I mean? like if, 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 if the opposition can't score a try you win the game oh absolutely you know I mean? if, if you score one one point and it's like and, and it's also it's some people are like oh you should just not listen to the media but the media is talking about your attack because you aren't scoring that many points so it is only natural for you guys to go all right well our defense is mad let's have a look at working on this attack you know what yeah. i mean it's not it's not unnatural for a team i think even um the roosters in 2000 and i think you might have been there 18 yeah and i think at the start of the year your attack was either i think it was your attack was terrible terrible and by the end of the year everything clicked i think you changed some things mid-year and then by the end of the year, you guys obviously fucking won the comp. Yeah. And so, like, even teams like the Roosters, like yourself, when you're playing there, it, there's certain parts of your game you've got to work on. And sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong. There's a few things on that. So, 2018, we didn't start hitting our straps until after Anzac Day. Okay. And that was about round eight or nine. Mm. And before that, it was, we had a new spine, mm. like Teddy and Kiri, mm. Coops. Mm. It was a lot of Jakey friend. There was a lot of people that haven't played together, so mm. it took quite a while to get it all down pat. Yep. But we started in the preseason with an attacking structure that after round two, we realised, all right, this is not our game plan. Okay. So then the good thing is that, mate, I've always held Rob Robbo at, at the pinnacle of coaching yeah. Yeah. and the way that he conducted himself and he owned that and not saying, okay, we stuffed up, it was, it's not working, mm. we're going to change it. Wow. So he took the onus of that saying, don't stress boys, he changed it mm. and then it took a couple of weeks and he quite, he knew that he didn't quite got it right he didn't get it yeah, right yeah. so he didn't stress again yeah he goes boys i'll work on it wow. hours on end he's taking the stress while well, us players are just trying to play games he's yeah. taking up all, all, all that and then he found out what works what's roosters dna mm. what, what are we based on what's our best way to play football mm. and Mate, credit to him. Yeah, that's he crazy. was so com composed throughout the whole thing. Mm. And then, so we changed our attacking structure three times that year. Wow. We had the highest errors and turnovers the whole year, but we made the most tackles and we were one of the best defensive sides in the competition. Wow. Better way to, to win the comp. Mate, it's um, for a coach to have the humility to go, boys, this is on me. Yeah. It's my structures that need to be to change. It's not a mistake, but I need to change it. Yeah. But also for you to be aware that he's going back and, and he's tinkering and he's tinkering and you guys may be winning and losing games and he's like, don't stress, boys, don't stress, I got this, to come back and then to, to figure it out and then go back to back. It's absolutely incredible. So um, I, I personally think Robbo, he's already, I already consider him one of the greatest I think that because he's so young, if he continues to coach for the next 20 years, like how can you not say that he's probably going to be one of the greatest of all time? Oh, I know. You know, because like, fuck. What's something that, that what, what, what has Robbo taught you that as a footy player do you think the most? Oh, he's taught me so much. Um, so one thing that I've learned from Robbo is ego and rugby league will only put a ceiling on your career. Yeah, okay, that's so true. Like he, so true. he takes ego out of everything. Mm. He analyzes things. He won't, he's not reactionary. He doesn't react on things, he's proactive. He makes sure things are sweet. And if something doesn't go right, mm. then he'll analyze it and just does not do any, anything on emotion. Yeah, okay. He takes the emotion out of it, makes it a strategic decision. Mm. And then that's when he'll sleep on it. He'll ponder, he, he won't just boom. And, and he's not reactionary, like yeah. I said. So yeah. that's probably one of the, the biggest things that I've learned from, from Robbo. Yeah, and so some people listening, they're like, well, reactionary, what, what do you mean by that? It's kind of like you lose two games mm. and then so the coach is like, fuck, something needs to change and they make change just for change's sake. Mm. Whereas it seems where Robbo will go, change needs to be made, but it needs to be the right change. Exactly. And whether it takes one or four weeks or six weeks, we're going to be patient and work it out rather than just going, fuck it, I'm changing this, this, this because we lost two games, holy fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got to have some fucking balls to that because the anxiety is going, you're losing games, you're losing games, holy crap. Yeah, and like you can see the coaches now, their jobs aren't secure, so to speak, in mm. terms of you can just get shafted. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the, the stress and the angst of 
my job's on the line here. Mm. How are you going to deal with that? Mm. And there's some coaches that like, if you lost a couple of games and you bring the boys in, you have a heated conversation mm. based on emotion. Mm. And then you would change your training structure that you had for the week. Mm. And you start putting in conditioning. You start putting in more penalties and stuff like that. Mm. And then when you come to game day, the boys are more fatigued. Yep. The boys are a bit turned off. The boys aren't feeling fresh. And then yeah. you might even lose again. And then once you start losing, you know yourself, can't be. It's like a domino effect. Yeah, and oh it's mate. hard to get out of it. You know what I mean? And then people start pointing fingers. Yeah. And it's just, oh, mate, it's torture. And it's the vibe around the place is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets, it gets bad quickly, especially when... Um, when you feel like you're being punished for, let's say you try as hard as you can, yeah. and you have a few errors, but you feel like you're constantly being punished, it just gets in your head where you're just not happy to be there. Whereas if like, if if someone can say at the start of you, these are our standards, and this is what we expect, and stick to it, mm. you can be like, you know what, like, that's fair. Yeah. We, we At the start of the year, we said that's what it was gonna be, that's what it is. Um, whereas it's when things start changing, yeah, it does put the, it, it puts a whole camp offside, because you start questioning, like, you know, well, well, hang on a sec. Like, okay, so we're getting towed up because this mistake, but I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, and it's the worst place to be about rope. Fuck, oh my God. Oh no. Changing room after you've been pumped is <laughs> the worst. It's bro. the worst. <laughs> you just want to get, you just want to have a shower, get home straight away. Um, you know what? In 2016, mm. the year I debuted at the Roosters, it was one of the worst. Yeah, kind of like second last yeah, or something. One, yeah. one, one of the worst I've been yeah, a part yeah. of. But it didn't feel like that at the time. Like, when looking back at it, I go, did we lose that many games? Yeah, wow. Well. But because Robbo made it in a sense of, all right, we lost. And like, a, he didn't make it like it was a, a graveyard. Mm. He goes, okay, we've lost that game. Let's move on to the next. Let's be positive. Let's move on. And mm. it was just, I just remember it was such a a fun year when you weren't winning. Yeah, it's weird. That's fucking super weird. It was so weird. Yeah. And the boys were tight. We didn't turn on each other. Mm. It was our rebuilding stage yeah, wow. you know what i mean we had so many young people coming through there was a lot of controversy at the club mm. but then 2017 we learned from that and then we almost we, we just i think we lost to, to cowboys yeah and they ended up and going winning the comp that year yeah, so the, the the game before the grand yeah, final yeah yeah and they went to the grand final they lost to storm i think but they had that crazy run where yeah. michael morgan was playing incredible yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um Wow, that's really yeah. As I said, I've got nothing but um, admiration for Rob. I think yeah. he's, I think he's like I, it goes for me. It goes Bennett, Bellamy, and then Robbo. I, I don't know about coaches before that. Like yeah, so yeah, I can't, yeah you exactly. Know, yeah, like, people would, people like yell about a name in the nineteen seventies. Like bro, it's nineteen seventies, man. Like what do you want me to do? Go back and watch every game. Like <laughs> fair enough, he might be better, but I didn't see him play. So exactly. I don't know. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, okay, so. What you so did you were you in the Origin squad this year at all? No, no, not this but year. The year before the year you were before, in the Origin yeah. squad. Um, what did you think of Origin at the end of the year? Did you enjoy it or not enjoy it? What was it like as a player watching it? Um, I wasn't actually. I was on holidays and that. Yeah. So I was didn't really have much to do with it in terms of the hype of it. Yeah. I watched it because yeah. where was I? I was at um I was at Byron Bay with every other person. Oh, that, in history in, <laughs> in Australia, history. everyone that's ever even people that have died came back from the dead and went to Byron Bay. <laughs> went to Byron Bay. Oh my God. Oh, I know. So you just, yeah, so I was there. Yeah. So, and the hype wasn't that big about Origin away. Yeah, okay. It was just about having fun and stuff like that. So but true, then yeah. Obviously I wanted to watch the boys. Yeah, and, 100%. Um, yeah, I think um I personally believe that it's better in season. A hundred percent. But um, because you could just, you could tell the boys were tired. So tired. People forget like they're human beings. Yeah. They've been in lockdown all year. Yeah. You're going to like, even though it's such an honor to play for your state, no one's saying that's not. Yeah. But you're also a human being. Yeah. And you get to that end of the season. It's like, oh my God, bro. Like, even I'm the so injuries. Tired. Yep. And it was a long training camp. I was speaking to the boys. Like it was just a long training camp. Yeah. Yeah. And to have to, after your season commitments, mm. If you're carrying injuries and you're going into oh. origin game that it's like it's war yeah you know absolutely what I mean? so then it's just like everyone's be, carrying injuries yeah, too yeah wow um lucky queensland got up though <laughs> um take us back to a young fella so obviously born in sydney yeah um and so did you you grew up whereabouts did you grow up in sydney um around the Parramatta area yeah okay but um yeah i was born in greenacre to all the diehards out there yeah okay <laughs> Green Acre. <laughs> Green Acre, yeah. So that's that's in the hood. Yeah, that's okay. in the hood, bro. So um yeah, not many what's people. What's the is it what's the majority? Is it majority like ethnic or what what's the yeah, majority? Yeah, yeah, it would be heavily based Lebanese community. Lebanese, yeah, okay. Yep. Passionate people. Passionate people. <laughs> and then end up coming there uh and playing that competition later on that year. Okay. Uh, later on that um 
in my career. Yeah. Played for Bankstown Bulls. Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, funny this. For the three years that I played for Bankstown, mm. they actually thought I was Lebanese. Oh, until, really? Until the last day, I, I was like the only Australian at the club. <laughs> and then I said, I'm actually Aussie. And Aussie. I said, he's Lebo. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what's well, funny, your, your accent is Le- like, it's the, that Sydney Lebanese accent. Yeah. And so it's just, it's whatever you grew up around, you know, you're going to have it the is, accent yeah. of whatever you grew up around. So was it always rugby league for you or was it something that slowly grew on you? Nah, always from the start, bro. Loved it. Always from, oh, under sixes, I wanted to play because of the oranges I got at halftime. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, mum yeah, and dad yeah. said, Listen, you can have oranges at home. So I took the year off to, uh, under sixes and came back in under sevens. And I knew, well, like, ever since from then, I wanted to play rugby league. Really? Like, just my loved dad it. played grade, my uncle played grade, everyone just played yeah. grade around me. So, so you, did your uncle play Broncos and Roosters? Broncos, Roosters, dad yeah. played Roosters. Um, my pop played footy. He's, um, and we, had a, we have a, lock, a, a long line of, wow. of, of people. Okay, so it's kind of like not in your blood in the sense of like you didn't have to do it, but yeah. it was also like, look, my family has done it, so if they can do it, I should be able to do it kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and it's just, I grew up, and my mum and dad are f- football fanatics. Oh, really? They're like, like my mum knows absolutely, like, every player, I, the moves. She knows no the way. football moves and That's that, crazy. and she would critique my game. No way. So, like, so when it came to football, I had two dads. hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, percent. So, like, when they're so heavily invested in rugby league, mm, yeah, it made me and my brother pretty mm. heavily invested in it too. Absolutely. So, like... The weekends was just footy, footy, footy. Yeah. I played for two different teams growing up. No like a Catholic comp would be on the Sunday. Yeah. And then like I played for Winnie Magpies and then Bankstown Bulls and stuff yeah. like that. So who was your team growing up? Um, Broncos, because my uncle would play with the Broncos. No bro. way. Yeah, That's so what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah, little, and I was watching little Kempy run around, bro, doing goosies. Oh, and that. mate. <laughs> the good old days, the good old days when I was about 20 kilos lighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so did you always excel like – you know, you know when you're coming through and if you're usually a decent athlete or whatever, you can tell that, you know, okay, I'm a bit better than the local league. And when you get to state, you're like, it was it always like that for you or you were a late bloomer? Yes. Mate, that's a good question. So <laughs> I started off in the Catholic comp. Yeah. And I was, I was going pretty well. Mm. But then on the same weekend, I'd play on the Saturday comp mm. and I wouldn't be as good. So okay. obviously there's a lot more better quality people playing mm. on the Saturday comp. And then... I was very skinny, very skinny, a little bit lanky, and I was yeah. on I was on the wing. Yeah, on the sting. On the sting, bro. I was a little kempy, bro. <laughs> but then, um, then as I started to get a little bit taller, I wasn't filling out. Okay. And then I wanted to get a little bit closer. I play to the ruck. I mm. play a little bit of touch footy here and there. Yeah. And then end up going into hooker. No way. And Biggest I, hooker I ever. Running, how are you getting down to the ball? Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, then I, I would start scooting and scoring a few tries, yeah. and I'm thinking, how good's this? Mm. But then um, my junior coach said. I'm scoring too many tries. <laughs> you got to pass the ball to to his son, who was oh, the halfback. Oh my! God. So then I'm thinking, this is a little bit, this is a little bit too much. Yeah. So how about I move comps? Yeah. So my mate was playing Bingstown Bulls at the time. Mm. He was with the Bulldogs. Mm. So he he said, come over. I said, okay. Me and my mate went over to Bingstown. Yeah. And then I, that's when I started playing the halves. Oh and I was just God. string bean of a half <laughs> running around, <laughs> and um, missed out on Harold Matts. Didn't wow. make, didn't make hail mats, but I wanted to trial for Roosters, Norse, and yep. Bowman and do all that. But mm. my dad said no. Really? My dad goes, I don't want you to do it. You're not ready yet. And I'm wow. thinking, this guy's trying to sabotage my career. <laughs> yeah. thinking, What's he doing? <laughs> yeah. And um, I just said, like, I remember going in my room crying. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I want to, I want to play rep footy. You don't get footy. it as a kid. You don't no. understand. And yeah. then my dad goes, No, you're not ready. Mm. And then he was just, he was very stern. Mm. He goes, If you made para, I'll let you play para. But you if you don't make para, then no. Oh, wow. I obviously didn't make para. Yeah. But then, um, <laughs> then 17's development, teams weren't really interested. I'm thinking, mate, what am, what am I going to do? Yeah. But I said, like, I remember my, my school teacher, he told me um, he's only seen one player from our school mm. that was going to play first grade, and that was Tenny Alalasalo. Okay. He goes, other than that, he goes, there won't be another one. He goes, I want you to, to knuckle down. Mm. You're not going to play rugby league. And hearing that from your school teacher, you're thinking, yeah. mate, come on, mate. You yeah. can't be doing that. Oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so unnecessary. You know, yeah. it's a different way to say it. Yeah. You know, than yeah. saying you're never going to play NRL. And then just the, the, the fact that he didn't believe in me mm. made me want to do it more. So I'm thinking, mate, blow this bloke. Yeah. So then I knuckled down, played the, you know, the school footy, how there's MCS, CCC, schoolboys mm. and all that. So I played mm. a bit of that. Mm. And um, there was a coach at um, St. Paul's, the school I went to. His name was Aaron McDonald. Mm. Done a bit of Harold Matz, SG Ball, stuff like that. 
But mate, he instilled so much faith in me mm. and he's just pushed me, pushed me, pushed me. And then now because of him, I end up getting a contract at Para yeah. for my SG ball year. Wow. And um, yeah, I'll be forever thankful to him. So how old were you when you ended up getting that, 18 or something? Yeah, 17 turning 18. Wow, wow. So in that 12 month period where the, the t- teacher at school was like, mate, you're not gonna make it, yeah. you need to study. And then you've gone, fuck, stuff you, mate. Like you had like, especially that age, like you're a yeah. bit older, like it's not like you were, you know, grade seven, 10, yeah, 11 yeah. years old. You're like 17 on the cusp. Yeah. Okay, so that, that year you get the, the, the Eels contract. Mm. Was there any other clubs interested or just the Eels interested? There was a few, there was a few clubs actually. Yeah. I didn't have a manager, I didn't have a club. Okay. So then yeah. that's when it all started to come about because I played one gala day. Mm. And um, so my school coach also was the coach of the MCS Metropolitan thing. Mm. And um, when he chose me for that and I played well, I just, I just want to re- repay the, like the faith that he put in me. Yeah, okay. You know, played really well. Then there was like South, Dragons, Parramatta, all these clubs. And then wow. even the, like somebody asked the recruitment people at Parramatta, who's this, who's this young kid? Like I remember my manager, who wasn't my manager at the time, asked, yeah. who's this young kid? And I said, oh, he's one, he's one of our juniors. Yeah. I said, oh, what, 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 how long is he contracted for? We said, oh, yeah, we don't know. So it was, I was the, the guy that no one knew about. Yeah, really. okay, because you weren't in the system. Wasn't in the system. Yeah, wow. I was the rover. I just went around and I didn't really have a spot. Yeah, okay. But then um, that year played SG Ball. It wasn't mm. a successful year with SG Ball. Yeah. Losing a lot of games. But then I ended up debuting in the 20s that year. Wow. So that was that was pretty cool. That's crazy. So you've gone from like fucking no contract to yeah. debuting for Para 20s. Yeah. Do you remember the, the you're going, did you train with the squad before you debuted or was it yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I'd done about a couple, couple of weeks with them. Mm. And um, so from my first game of SG Ball to my first game of under 20s, mm. so in that space of, I think, eight months, I put about 16 kilos. Oh, wow. Far yeah, out. Because you're kilos. doing a proper weights program. Proper probably. weights program. Yeah. I've never really done weights before. Yeah. Started taking protein. Yeah. Protein. <laughs> so then I'm just, oh, yeah. So I was taking protein in that. And then, um, and then I had my natural growth spurt. Yeah. So then I started putting, I put 16 kilos on. I'm thinking, wow. this now I feel more at home. Absolutely. And then um, played a couple of games that year. Were you still playing six? Yeah, still playing six. Oh my god! So you, you just imagine how skinny I was. Oh, before. bro, fucking oath. Yeah. Fucking oath. Um, so I done that, and then the year after, under twenties, I had a wrist rico. Oh really? Yeah. That rattle you a bit because you'd come so far. You know, yeah. you finally made like got into the system, and then the wrist goes massively. Yeah. So did you sign a one year deal with them or a two year deal with them? It was a three-year deal okay so the initial deal was three-year deal so at least yeah. you had that security yeah 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 and so you get the risk rico the next year did you come back and go into the 20s so that was my final year in the 20s yeah yep. okay that yep. was my final year and i was very optimistic i said well i want to play grade mm. this is my last year in the 20s to make it to make a, a name for myself kind of thing mm. and i just i sit at goals Okay. I set out goals and I said, I want to achieve all these. It was very, it was very optimistic. <laughs> and um, at the end, at my last goal was to be in the top 30 yeah, okay. for the next year. Mm. And I, just set, I just set these goals to, to have ambition, to make sure that I left no stone unturned. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. then I just started slowly ticking them off. I wanted Brad Arthur to know my name. Yeah. So oh, really? I was, and then he ended up knowing my name. Wow. I wanted to play, I wanted to be captain of yep. the 20 side. Mm. Ended up getting captain on the 20s side. So Justin Holbrook so. was my coach. Wow. Um, then I wanted to play New South Wales Cup that year. I've done that. Yeah. New South Wales on the 20s, New, uh, Australian on the 20s. I wanted to do those. I got that done. Um, I want to get team of the year. Didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy. 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 <laughs> but, so um, so you, you made New South Wales, the Australian 20s as well. Yep. Um, so that, that year for you was probably your best year to date. I oh, it was for having nothing. Mm setting goals and then achieving most of them, mm. knowing that I, di- I didn't expect to achieve them. Yeah, but okay. it was the fact that I said, I, Want I know I'm capable of doing these okay, yeah. and putting my mind to it. And the last one is being in the top 30. Yeah, okay. And then once I got that down pat, mm. I remember there was a few things about like, they, want, they wanted to put me in the train and trial and stuff like that. And I, I said to Brad, I said, Brad, listen, I'll, my goal is to be in the top 30. Yeah, yeah. I'm going in the top 30. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then I end up going in the top 30. How good is that? And I just, it was the last tick and I, it just felt so good. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. I was on top of the world camping. And then the funny thing is that following year, I didn't know where I was yeah, okay. in terms of 
it's New South Wales Cup. I didn't know what goals to set. I don't know if I wanted to play grade. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I set no goals. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst year I've ever played in oh, my life. Oh, really? Fuck. Worst year I've ever played in my life. That's crazy. I um, Some people are really good with, like some people need, they just need that, just that, just on a piece of paper right yeah. there. And there's some people that are a bit like erratic and they can just deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Everyone's really different, but it's, it's crazy that you could you put it down on paper and it, it must be like a subconscious thing that just pushes you towards what you've written down it was the weirdest thing because at the time i didn't i didn't say oh i'm not going to write goals this year mm. it's just i was about to write goals and i said because i worked the previous year yeah and the other years i never had them okay. so i'm thinking oh should i write goals but then the weirdest thing i was like i don't want to put too much expectation on myself yeah okay. but, and then i don't want to fail but then, like, I felt, I felt scared. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I get it. I mean, I think everyone, to some extent, deals with the fear of failure. Yeah. Because it's like, you feel, as, when you don't, or like me personally, anyway, when you don't achieve it, you feel ashamed a bit. Yeah. A little bit ashamed of yourself, a bit embarrassed, like, oh, can't believe I thought that I could do that. And, like, everyone's laughing at me. When in reality, no one's laughing at you. And yeah. anyone that is laughing at you is a Derek. Who cares hey, what hey. they think? Um, and I, you know, it's crazy. I reckon Brad loved the fact that you were like, Brad, my goal is top 30. I want to be in that top 30. He would have been like, you know what? I love that attitude. That's probably, your attitude probably got you into that top 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't like it too much because then the next year he <laughs> put me in Royal Massey Cup. I was training first grade and I'm yeah. playing Royal Massey Cup. Wow. And then I'm going, this is. So, is, so everything was just out of whack that year. Your form wasn't as good. Everything just didn't it was, work. It was just, yeah. And the funny thing is, I'm in Royal Massey Cup training grade so that's too below it's yeah, unheard massive. of yeah unheard absolutely. of and i said to my i said to my dad i don't want to play footy anymore mm. wow i said i want to give up i said this is rubbish mm. i was going to bed i was so upset mm. and my brother was playing sydney shield at the time and he's three years younger than me mm. and i said to dad i said no nah, i want to go play sydney shield yeah i want to go play with dean mm. and my dad no he grabbed me by the ear and he goes if you do that that'll be the end of your career yeah absolutely absolutely and i said i don't care i don't care yeah, you're young you're just you're upset yeah you're yeah. heartbroken you're not achieving your goals you're not understanding why the coach is making those decisions when yeah. you get a bit older you start to realize oh maybe this could have been better and they signed um paris on kieran foreign okay so then um i was still a half at the time wow, that's fucking crazy and right? i'm just going oh I, I don't know what to do mm. and then um just with how it all panned out and I just knew that the club wasn't right for me mm. and my mental state and, and how I was going. So I ended up speaking to Trent Robinson yep. and had a few chats with him and then he goes, yeah, I want to take you on board, no promises, mm. just we'll see how you go. Mm. So I ended up going to Roosters the following year. Wow. And then here I was training with the likes of Boyd Corner, Joe yeah. Ria Hargraves, Mitchell Pierce. I'm thinking, what is this? I was so scared going to this club, thinking there's so like these guys are a step ahead of Parramatta. Yeah. So yeah. imagine how much more egos are going to be. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Because in 2015, Parramatta are full of egos. Oh, really? It's, it's... So then we're going to the Roosters, first day, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is scary. Mm. It was the best thing I've ever seen. Wow. So everyone was kind of like treated everyone equally kind of thing equally yeah i'm i'm a nobody yeah coming into a rooster side getting embraced by the the, the captain of the club mm. and he yeah. and then it got to a stage that i ended up breaking my ankle mm. that pre-season mm. and then boyd i was injured pc was injured jared was injured and they took me under their wing and i'm going out to dinners with them at Crenides. we've got the club card wow Maddo's having five pizzas. He's <laughs> loving it. And that's when I started putting the weight on. <laughs> yeah, then I pushed out of the halves. Yeah, but, it's really interesting because sometimes clubs internally, the playing group can struggle with dealing with ego. Like yeah. every club deals with it at some stage. Yeah. And it takes a good culture and leadership to, to stamp that out. And yeah. Roosters under Robbo seem to have a really good way of um, keeping everything in check. Yeah. Storm really good at it too. You always hear people say, when I went to the Storm, like, Cam Smith come up, shook my hand and was like, mate, speak to me in that. Whereas some clubs, you go and the older boys are like, they don't speak to you, you haven't yeah. had your stripes. It's really interesting to see different clubs dealing with, it's a struggle. It's a, Men's ego is fucking one of the worst things ever. Oh, massive. It kills teams. It, it does, kills it teams. does. Um, okay, so you go to the Roosters, you, you, break your, you break your ankle, did you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. And so at what point did you move out to the uh, wide running forward? So I broke my ankle. That was around Christmas time. Mm. And 
I thought my season was gone. I'm getting here joking. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And then um, I said, "I'm what I what I stuffed up last year was not writing goals. Mm. So even though that my career is a bit up in the air for the year, mm. I'm still going to write goals. Yeah, totally. so I want a debut. I put that down. Um, what else did I put down? Put a few other things down, but um, I remember debuting. Yeah, that year. So you debuted that, that year. year, and then. I ended up debuting that year, Anzac wow. Day. No, oh, Anzac, Anzac Day. Day. Holy moly, big game to debut. And I'm going, <laughs> I, I said, after that, now that I write goals, mm. I'm going to keep doing that because yeah. Yeah. last year, the year, oh, well, the year before that, yeah. I wasn't writing any goals. Yeah, played terribly. Played nothing terribly, worked, nothing yeah. worked out for me. Even though it was in the subconscious, yeah. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, totally. But it just goes to show that if you want to put a goal down, mm. And you're not worried about the outcome of it, mm. but you've got your eyes set on wanting to achieve that goal. Mm. That's all you need. Uh, totally. That's all you need. Yeah. So when I've done that, um, debuted, Anzac Day, 30 odd thousand there. Crazy. Do you remember the conversation with Robbo? Yes. So <laughs> I think he, he thought I was a bit of an overthinker. Yeah, okay. When I was younger, I might have been mm. guilty. <laughs> but, um, he got me out. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't tell me at the start of the week. Okay. So I only, I only played one. New South Wales Cup game. Wow. Before that. Wow. So he must have loved the way you trained all year, really. Yeah, yeah. So I was very diligent because I put that in my head. I'm debuting. Yeah, okay. So, and I, like I said, there's a lot of people that are injured. Mm. So we had the best rehab crew. Yeah, okay. And people were pushing each other. It was just the best. And Boydo is like a known oh, great trainer. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Jared pushed everybody hard. We had a uh, Paddy Lane. He was our strength and conditioning dude slash rehab. Yeah. He was a legend full of high vibes and yeah. it was just a good you crew. need energy bro you know, oh, hey, mate, he brought especially it especially in rehab yeah. everyone's heads off yeah, and no one hey. wants to be there and then um, so then Robbo put me aside on the Wednesday we are mm. playing on the Saturday mm. he goes you want to debut this is as we're walking on the field to train Oh, wow. so I didn't have time to think about yeah, it yeah yeah just straight into it I said are you joking <laughs> he goes no I'm being serious I said hold on give me a couple of minutes yeah. I went to the sideline and I'm just, I'm just tearing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just absolutely tearing. And I'm just thinking everything that my mum and dad sacrificed for me, yeah, totally. everything I sacrificed myself, mm. this is all paid off. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just wanted to just call my mum mm. and let her know. I just wanted to say, listen, mama, we made it. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? Yeah, we did it. All that. All, and then, and, and like, it's just with your dad as well. Like, he had some stern, tough decisions chats with you. Yeah. That would have hurt him. As you get older, you realize, like, fuck, that would probably hurt him too to do yeah. that. But it was right to be strong with you and be like, nah, like this is this, don't quit, don't yeah. give it up because it's, you know, it's, uh, and then you, you finally get it. And on Anzac Day, what do you remember from the game? Oh, so when I got, it was like one of those things that even it's a home game, yeah. they still go into camp. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so the hotel and that. So yeah. we stayed, at, I think it was at the Hyatt and it was very, it was a very um, emotional one because Robbie took us to the, um, all the like the army stones and all the people oh, passed yeah, the, away. Yeah, and, the, and did the, the, they do the dawn parade and that? Like yeah, the, the dawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah so okay. we went there and we went to um, pay our respects to everyone that's passed away that that served mm. our great country. And it just it was like a it was like a movie. Really leading leading up to it, I'm just thinking I can't believe that I've been given an opportunity to mm. debut mm. this week, heading into such a a memorable game for the Roosters because this is the pinnacle. Of mm. Sydney Roosters comp games, mm. yep. Anzac Day, huge game, and um, not one bit of nerves. It was just full of excitement. Really, full of say. excitement. Yeah, and um, I just remember we're doing the national anthem, and um, I know the New Zealand anthem as well. So I'm singing the New Zealand anthem at the same time. <laughs> really? We're doing both of them. Yeah, okay. Because I'm just so I'm just so happy to be there. Yeah, yeah. And um, how do you know that? Is your mum you Kiwi at all, or? That was all the boys that when I was at Para. Oh, in the 20s. They know it. They're okay. all Kiwi boys. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I end up learning it. Yep. And um, yeah, so then I'm, I'm singing that. And then the, the cameras, I can see them. I see myself on the big big screen singing the New Zealand anthem. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, Oops. oh my God. I, I don't, I, I'm not doing it to be disrespectful. Yeah, I'm doing yeah, it yeah. because like, I'm just so, I know it. Yeah. I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. And also, it is Anzac. Like, we went to yeah. war together. Like, that's Bloody the whole earth. point yeah. of it. Us in New Zealand, I mean, to go to war together, that there's no, the connection can never be broken between yeah. us and New Zealand. Like, yeah, we put shit on each other and we joke. But at the end of the day, it's us versus everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then it was just oh, just the roar of the crowd. Yeah, I couldn't get over it. 
Mm. And then it was, yeah, full of excitement. And then I threw an intercept to <laughs> Khalifa Fai Fai Lol. <laughs> And he almost put my uh, my debut in the bin. So, what how uh, what minute did you throw the intercept? Um, what position were you playing? Halfback. You played. You debuted at six. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, me and Jackson no. Hastings. Yeah. No. And that was Boydo's first game returning, and he was my edge back rower. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. And, um, I did not know that. Yeah. So I, I've got a at the back, quick hands. Mm. Khalifa, Fai Fai, Law <laughs> takes the intercept, runs the length. I'm going, you're joking. Yeah. You're absolutely joking. So I'm behind the Devo. Yeah, behind the, um, the post going. Off. Going. <laughs> <laughs> Worst debut ever. <laughs> Mind you, my mum said, don't throw an intercept. Oh. So I, oh, I was so off it. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, absolutely. So I had to get I had to get my head out head out off the ground kind of thing. And I yeah. said, All right, I've come this far. Mm. Everyone's here. Yeah. Let's go. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. And then um, what happened? Then put a grubber in, Latrell scored, set up one. Next time, put a kick, rega- regathered, flick pass, Jake Friend, try. Yeah. And then crossfield kick, Fergo jumped up, passed it back to me, try. No way. So, so two tries, this and a try. Yeah. Let's go. And I'm going, that, that's, that's what – I'm glad that <laughs> I had that, that – Stuff up. That stuff up in terms of, because looking back at it now, I could have easily just quite, just I don't know, thrown the rocks, towel. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, oh, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, totally. The totally. emotion, all the crowd, mm. could have gotten too big for me. Yeah. But the fact that I put that aside mm. and I said to myself, okay, what's next? What's the next thing that I can do? Yeah. And that's, I, I remember I focused on support. Mm. So every single thing, I remember Sam Moa had him in a run. I'm pushing in support, didn't mm. pass to me, come back. Yeah. Um, Nap would run, push in support, come back. I was just constantly pushing in support yeah. to see what I could do for my teammates mm. to get myself back in the game. Yeah, totally, totally. And then looking back at it now, all those try assists and the tries that I scored was supporting. Yeah, totally. So it, it, it paid off kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. I mean, and you're totally right. Like if you just if you if you take care of those things in a footy game, that's yeah. why, why I think Tedesco is so good is that he does those things every yeah. single game, like yeah. support, support, support. Everything seems to work out outside of that. Yeah. Um, okay, so you have a, so you win the game? Lost. Lost the game. Lost, but carrying on like I won it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going, I had about 30 odd people behind the um, post. Yeah, yeah. And there was a Madison chant, all my mates. Oh, yeah, good I, had my, I had a box, Bruce has got my family a box. Mm. And it was, honestly, I was the happiest man in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Win, lose, or draw, that the pinnacle of, Debuting at the same mm. club my dad done. Yeah. Fucking um, wow. Overcoming that bit of adversity and, and end up having a good game. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, the result didn't go to plan, but mm. we almost we almost come back and won. Yeah. And then um, two games after that, then I ended up playing City Country. No way. Because a few people pulled out. Shit. Yeah. So that was when a lot of people believed that City Country was a bit of a hoax. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not as important not anymore. Not as important anymore, but... Yeah. I didn't let that worry me. Yeah, no way. So I went out there and mate, I had, I had a good, I had a good, good time. Good crack. Yeah. Was was Freddie the coach? Yeah, then? he was a coach. Yeah. What was because that would have been your first experience with Freddie? Yeah, that was my first experience with yeah, him. Yeah, what was that like? Well, he's I was meant to be 18th man. Yeah, okay. And um, I was just so happy to be there. Yeah, holy oath. And um, Hayden Knowles was there as well, and he was at the Roosters at the time with me. Mm. And I, I was just a competitor at training, and I just competed, had fun, and then um, Freddie goes. Oh, you want to be playing? I said, really? He goes, opposition. I said, he goes, centre. I never played centre in my life. <laughs> so I said, okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and I remember Mansour, Josh Mansour was my winger. He goes, oh, he goes, what do you like to do? He wanted to get a bit of a read of, of how I like to play. Yeah, yeah. So I've never played centre before, bro. <laughs> and he goes, okay, not cool. And then it was just one of those things. Yeah, it was just yeah. the funniest thing. He's the perfect winger to have as well because like he is, that's his kind of attitude where he's yeah. just like, okay, cool. He's yeah. not like a... Yeah, like that's that's I can imagine Josh the, the source saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> was so cool. And then like the, the fact that he didn't care yeah. made me. I don't care. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just a, another game. Yeah, totally, totally. So early on, I ended up taking an intercept, going the length. No way. Fl- like it just it just felt so natural being amongst these boys. Yeah, okay. And um, on paper, uh, uh, the countryside mm. they had a lot better side on paper. Yeah. But we absolutely, yeah, pulled, pulled him the shreds that How game. How good's that? I mean, what an experience, like, to go to get 18th man, pulled into the side, play in centre, score an intercept try. Um, okay, so that's – so 2017, you make 23 appearances. Um, 
and you and you fall one short of the grand final. What was that year like for you? Because that's when you really became a first grader as well. You know, twenty three appearances, your your whole season, um, and you get one game short of the grand final. Like, were you taking it all in? Were you going, wow? Like, I mean, a few years ago, I was really struggling, wasn't mm. sure what I wanted to do. And is also that the year that you moved to the wide running forward? Nearly. Yes. So, 2017 was the year I played wing, center, 5 8, <laughs> wing, half back, front row, hooker, no way. back row, and lock. Mate. Everything besides fullback. No so, I was, playing, I was playing musical chairs that year. <laughs> yeah. Anything to be in the side. Anything to be in the side. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was it, it was it was a it was a funny year because obviously I was on the bench, I was starting, I was doing all the different pieces, but I just knew that I had to bide my time and, and to play first grade, you yeah. do, you got to do the the apprenticeship role. Absolutely, some people don't have to do that. Yeah, some people have to do that. Yeah, I knew it being in that at the Roosters, I had to do that. Yeah, and with the success that we were having, I was just I was happy to to play my part. Yeah, totally, and learn. Mm. And then going to the semifinals, I was playing center and Latrell was playing wing in defense but then in attack we would switch okay so um yeah it was just it was just a weird weird year yeah but it was a it was a big learning curve that year i, yeah. learned, I learned a lot yeah, yeah you would have learned so, especially different positions as well yeah. you would have figured out like what your body is suited to what is it isn't suited to yeah. so, so the next year though this is a you know an incredible year um yeah, what was it like that 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 year as i said you started off the year you seemed to be struggling and then it all kind of come together it's also the year where cooper cronk played with that busted shoulder hey what was it like going into that grand final it was unbelievable so that that year going back to goal setting yeah i put i want to win a comp no way that's what i said i want to win a comp 2018 i want to win a comp yeah yeah and um the first five games i'm thinking oof, we got to we got to change something yeah change something and that's when i started to become the back rower Okay. So okay. Um, I was right back row mm. for the first 12 games and then I had a head knock and that put me out until from round 12 to about round 20 or round 21. Oh, the head knock did? Head knock. Wow, this is a bad yeah. head knock. Yeah. Wow. And that was a massive roller coaster. That was how, how am I meant to deal with this? Am I going to become better? Mm. My vision was playing up. Am I going to be able to see properly again? Yeah, yeah wow. My hearing. Was what? it a really bad concussion? Yeah, I got I got... I got hit by the ball. Someone mm. kicked the ball from about the same distance as you and yeah. I, and it just hit me in the head. And at the time, I didn't feel anything of it. Yeah. Um, but then that night, the migraines were so oh, mate, unbearable. And then I remember coming home, and my missus picked me up from the airport, and I wasn't the same. I felt different. Yeah, wow. Um, I was having like slurred speech. And oh, I'm, I'm thinking, this is this is not on, eh? Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't have known that much about delayed concussion at no, all. But I've been, I, I had knocked, I've been knocked out plenty of times before yeah, that. Yeah. Nothing happened. Got over it within a second. Yeah, yeah. But this one was different. I felt tingling in the legs as soon as it happened. Wow. And it was just, yeah, it was a very weird game. Yeah, okay. And um, I've come back, try to come back the week after. Yeah. A training. As you do. Yeah. No, nah, shocking. Didn't even lace the boot. Mm. And then. They so were you feeling nauseous and, and all that kind of stuff or just more migraines and blurry vision? Migraines, blurry vision. No, I was, I was sleeping for 16 hours. What? Wow. Some stage 16 hours. I'm just constantly sleeping. No way. Didn't want to eat. The, I didn't want to look at the light. I'm just... Wow, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I was in dramas. A lot of people don't like... It, it, it's still very unclear what brain trauma is, how yeah. it works. We, we, don't, we don't have that much science on it. Like we yeah. don't actually know... You know, you might look at, you can look at some guy and he gets completely sparked. Yeah. But then a few days later, he's okay. Sweet, yeah. Then like you get a ball kicked in your head. Yeah. And it's like, for some reason, it hits you just in the perfect spot. The brain yeah. moves in just a certain way. It takes 10 weeks to come back from oh. it. Well, so we getting into like the fourth and fifth and sixth week, were you starting to wig out thinking, I'm not going to be able to come back from this? Heavily, especially because leading into it, the, the, the se uh, two games before, I got dazed mm. and then the game before I got knocked out. Okay, so it was like accumulation. Accumulation. Of yeah, okay, yeah. And then this one was the, was the icing on the cake. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Cherry on top. And um, I've always compared it to kind of like one of your fingers. If you've jarred your finger, you're constantly getting that jarred. It just kills. Yeah, you know, when you jarred your thumb, you're just like, ah. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And it was like it got to a stage that I just kept jarring it, jarring it mm. into my brain. Mm. And yeah, it hit me 
here for six. Mate, that's crazy. Ten weeks. Okay, so the game you did come back was that? A, did you come straight back into NRL or did you play reserve grade first? To oh, I came back in NRL. Wow. Um, what was it? We had a lot of people out. We had three people debuting, mm. and Robbo goes, "Are you right?" <laughs> I'm going, oh. Yeah. So I said, I don't know when I'm going to get better. So I said, I'm going to have to take this plunge. Yeah. It's been about try. ten weeks now. Like, yeah. I've, like if I'm not going to be right. Yeah. What am I going to do? Totally. So then I said, all right, I'll play. Yeah. So then I done a wrestling session. And I had to wrestle everybody in the. In Excuse the mic. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. No, no, it's yeah. Um. Yeah. I had to I had to wrestle every player for thirty seconds before I played. Yeah. Just to get some some wrestling back. Yeah. And mate, I've done something to my back. I don't know why I've done. <laughs> oh, no. And I just I just pulled a muscle on my back. I'm yeah. thinking I'm not even going to play because of my back now. Yeah. So I had to get that locally anesthetic before I, before I played. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went out. Came off the bench. Came off the, did I come off the bench? I think I came off the bench. Mm. And I played, um, yeah, I played some decent minutes. Yeah, okay. And I, I felt good. Okay, yeah. And I'm thinking, I, I'm back. Yeah, I'm sweet. Yeah. I'm back. Mm. And then, um, yeah, then I'm just, I'm, I was just so grateful that I could be back playing. Absolutely, absolutely. Because obviously I, I, didn't, I didn't miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime, which was like a grand final. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so that leading to the grand final, what was that? I mean, that was a crazy week because of the Cooper Cronk situation. Yeah. It was so dramatic. What was it like being in, in amongst that? It was funny because um, I was a part of the puzzle in terms of throwing teams out in terms of, oh, Ryan Madison might be playing in the halves. Yeah, yeah, totally. There was totally. Albo that was named at seven. Yep. It was just a big game. Yeah. And it was just, it was, you had to kind of play the game but then also focus on your task at hand. Mm. When I talk about play the game as in like, you would have played a bit of a joking, like play charades, who's playing what, just to throw Melbourne out. Cause Absolutely. they didn't, they didn't I, to this day, I don't know who they thought was gonna be playing halves. Yeah, totally. But I went on the footy show and um, Robbo said, we wanna throw, throw them off, pretend that you're playing in the halves. Oh wow, how good is that? So then I've gone on the footy show, I've never been on the footy show before. Yeah. And I'm just sweating. I'm going, <laughs> oh my God, they're probably going to catch my lies. Yeah. And then, <laughs> catch so then I'm just hanging out, talking, talking. And then Freddie asked my asked a question. Yeah. Are you, oh, so you'll be playing in the halves this week? Yeah. But I didn't want to say yes, but I didn't want to say no. And it's too obvious if you say yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, oh yeah, Freddie, uh, you'll wait and see, mate, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then a few more other questions started coming at me. And I'm just going, I'm not, wasn't ready for this. And then I answered them, answered them pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And then after Robert goes, good job. <laughs> so I felt good, I felt good. Mate, how crazy is like these old, all these mind games? Cause it's such a big role. Like you, you, people think, oh, well, who cares play seven? But it really matters. It does. They had a drone. They had a drone at our training session. No way. And they, in the paper, I remember it, it had all the, all the boys there and had all the names of what player was in what position. No so way. that they, people really wanted to find out. Yeah, absolutely. But there was absolutely, you know, they say loose, loose lips sink ships. Yeah, there was no loose lips at the Roosters. Yeah, so it, there wasn't. Like there nah. was nothing got leaked. There was nothing. Nothing. I think it's just like shows how good of a group of boys that you had there that like yeah. everyone's like, nah, not a chance. Yeah, not a chance, yeah. Wow, they had a drone at your training. So was there anything you did at training to pretend like someone was playing seven what did you yeah. do at training yeah we had different people filling in having a bit of a joke it was just it was actually so funny because like yeah. it wasn't full of angst and stress it was a bit of a let's throw these guys out because we could see them that was doing it yeah okay and then once they got all the media out mm. and there was no drones allowed to be a training yeah then all right now we do the now we do the stuff yeah, okay so it was a bit of a yeah Bit of a, a like a, a play like we're, we're doing the the puppet puppeteers. Yeah, man, that's fucking so cool. Okay, so Lee, but like a few days. When did you know for sure? Because even you players didn't know whether he was going to play. Hey, yeah, yeah. So when did you know that it was a, like pretty much day of game? Day of game. Yeah. Wow. Day of game. Yeah. Far out. At the time, I didn't even realize, but Cooper and Kerry, in defence, they were switching sides. Yeah, they were. So too, they yeah. they couldn't target Cooper. Yeah. Totally. So they couldn't say, all right, our game plan is to attack the left. Yeah. Because Cooper was on the right. Yeah. Yeah. I just Kiri and, and Coop just kept switching. Wow. So and I'm smart. going, that's just that's, that's so good. So smart. And it's and you've got to have so much faith in both players to do it at the right time. Yeah, so they yeah, don't yeah. pull themselves out of the fucking line and all of a sudden no one's in the line. Yeah. Man, incredible. Okay, so you 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 play the game. What do you remember from the actual game, you personally? Um a line break. I I made a line break down mm. the left hand side. Mm. And I just hear the, the crowd roar. And I'm yeah. just running. I've got, I've got um, Billy to beat. Mm. I'm trying to put some footwork on. And I just feel people mowing me down from yeah. behind and just latch onto me. Yeah. Like I'm a deer and they're a lion. I'm yeah. just going, geez. <laughs> wow. but it, was just, it was the best feeling. Mm. 
And then um, at the time, I, I threw a, a sneaky flick pass. Yeah. There was, there was no need for it at all. <laughs> but at the time, it just, just happened. Yeah, yeah, it just felt natural. And then, um, yeah, I've, all, I've got that. So I've always, I always showed my kids that. Yeah. yeah. This flick pass that led to nothing. But, um, <laughs> yeah. We almost scored. Passes, we yeah. almost scored. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what have we gone down in the hole? That's really, um, <laughs> nah, but we didn't score. <laughs> okay, so the buzzer goes and he's win that final and it's just like everything erupts. What's that feeling like for you? A lot of carry on. Yeah, a lot, a lot, lot of, ca of carry on. <laughs> oh my God, I can't. My voice, I lost my voice. Mm. From, sc from screaming um one of the one of the, the stories that would always be with me was when, but just before we done the the lap of honor my dad was in the stands mm. and i grabbed my dad i said dad we done it mm. i grabbed him i've pulled him over yeah over the fence the security guards goes oi 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 i go now nah, leave him leave him yeah. my dad does a lap of honor with me how good is that? With all the boys and my dad. I'm thinking this is unheard of. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, and my totally. dad's loving it. Yeah. And like he's going to the crowd. <laughs> we're, we're loving it. It was the best yeah. story ever. he played for the Roosters, hey? Yeah. Yeah, wow. So like he got to live that through me as well. Yeah. And I've always, I'll, I'll always get to share that I've done a lap of honour with, with my mates. Yeah. And my dad. Oh, man. 100%. You know what I mean? So good. It was the best feeling. It was the best feeling. Incredible. Man. Okay, so... So, but er, was it earlier in the year you signed with the Tigers or was it after the grand final? That was just negotiations started to happen whilst I had the head knock. Okay. So I wasn't partaking in most of that. Okay. My manager was dealing with most of that. Which is common, very which common. Which was common. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously both parties didn't want to stress me out. Yeah, totally. So then that wasn't until I started coming back and I sat down with Robbo and had a a face-to-face like -face conversation with him about mm. like, I need to take my, my football to the next level. I need to become more of a, a dominant player. Yeah. I want to become... And a starting, on a starting, starting side, yeah. yeah. So um, that year, it was it was hard because I was close with Robbo, very, and I still am now. Mm. So to have that conversation with him and for him to be open and me to be open and, mm. and him to realise that this is going to be the best for my career, mm. mate, I I can't thank him enough. He, he's... And I've always come... I always call him for advice as well. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so, he's so, he, so he basically said to you, look, like right now we've got quite a lot of um, second rowers mm. and it's probably best for your personal career if you be go become one of the dominant... You know, yeah, he was open forwards. to that. So yeah. that year I was actually starting back row. Okay. And then when I came back, mm. I was not interested in playing back row anymore. Okay. I wanted to play lock. Okay, okay. So then I was coming off the bench and me and Rads would be playing together in the okay. middle and we'd just have a laugh. Yeah. But then... I said to myself, actually, you know what? I think I want to play back row. Okay. And that was after they've signed Angus. Yep. And then... Boydo as well. And they've got Boydo there. Mm. But then the Roosters were pretty keen to have me as the lock with Rads. Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, I just... Robbo was, was, was so good. Yeah, wow. Okay. His understanding, he, like he understood... Because he, he gave me a debut jersey. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. He, um, he taught me everything that I kind of knew. Yeah, okay. And for, for him to, to allow me... To, to spread my wings and, and, to, and to better myself as a footballer and as a person, mm. I, uh, I, can't, I can't thank him enough. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's good. I mean, it's, um, it shows that he really cared about you as a player. Like, yeah. he could have tried to convince you, nah, stay here. Like, you know, we need... Because you're such a good player that fuck, he's losing it. You were a nearly origin rep by that point. You know what I mean? The next year you went and made the squad at least. Okay, so you... So what, what, what was it the Tigers that you decided to go to over... I'm sure you had... Was there any interest from any other clubs that you're close to going to? Yeah, there was quite a few interests. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that... Um, I, had a, I had a few meetings with um, Ivan Cleary. Yeah, okay. And um, he seemed like a, a pretty, cool, pretty cool guy. Mm. And there was no expectation. He goes, mate, there's a spot at back row. Mm. We, want you to, we want you to take it. Mm. And it was, the, it was the fact that like the unknown of... This is an opportunity for you. We're going to provide you with that. Yeah. And then I also thought that like going to the Tigers, I could be um, a player that I could build a legacy there. Okay. Yep. And um, yeah, it was like a club full of history. And um, I had some family members that were um, playing for West Magpies back in the day and they, they were club legends. Okay. So it was just it was enticing to to try and and go do that. Okay, so actually, so Ivan Cleary signed you. Yeah, Ivan Cleary. Okay, so Ivan Cleary signed you. I mean, okay, yeah. So he signed you. 
and then he announces that he's moving on or whatever, and Madge gets signed. What, what did you? When was the first conversation with him? You know what I mean? Because he's a new coach, new rule. Madge. Yeah, yeah. The, the day we rocked up. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sweet. So it was a bit like, as you know, it was a bit of limbo. We yeah. didn't, like, as players, we didn't know if Ivan was going to be coach or not. Did you train with Ivan at all or no, you didn't? No. So he signed you and then you didn't even get to train with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It was, a, it was a bit weird. It was a bit yeah. weird, but um, everyone has their own story. Yeah. I don't know what Ivan had in, in the background and I'll never never hold a grudge or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. Because mate, he's killing it now and I still speak to him and yeah. he, he's a legend of a bloke. You're totally right. Everyone has, there's so much more to most stories than you would realise. Yeah. And... If you just focus on your own on your own story or what you can see, mm. you'll never see the big picture. Mm. So and you get you hold up so much, just so much negative energy on things. So Ivan signed me, he left. Mm. I can't hold any grudge. Yeah, absolutely. I can't hold any negativity because he wasn't my coach anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I had to go deal with what was at hand, and Madge came in. Yeah. And I I was very open to that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so that first preseason happens, and I mean you played you I I believe you're their best player that year. Um, were you happy with your footy performance as a footy player that year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Um, obviously, there's always areas of, of improvement. Yeah, yeah. And um, so 2019, that year, I'll, performance-wise, it was good. Mm. Was I happy outside of, like, outside of football? Mm. I wasn't really happy outside of football. Okay. Um, so I, I knew that, like... I had to do something because me as a person was losing. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And then I knew it was only going to be a matter of a time that it was going to start affecting my football. Yeah, okay. So I had to I had to, to do something that was going to be beneficial for myself. Yeah. And then that's when the best decision, I had many meet, meetings with, with the Tigers and mm. the best decision for myself and for the club it was was to move on. Yeah, okay. And that's when um, I met with um, a few clubs, but Parramatta was the one that was – were enticing yeah okay and um i met with brad and we everything that happened in 2015 him dropping me to ron massey carp yeah, yeah i had to let that go all that yeah, ego absolutely. yeah was i had to let that go yeah totally, totally and um it was actually very weird because i haven't spoken to him very much since that all happened yeah yeah, and yeah. I, I used to hold a bit of a grudge yeah absolutely You're young and i'm, yeah, and I'm yeah. just going mate stuff this bloke stuff this bloke yeah and i said you know what like i told you about having ego can only cap your ceiling yeah totally so i got rid of that had a chat with him i'm thinking he's a good bloke yeah he's a good bloke this guy's going to help me he's going to develop me yeah he had ambitions for me and he also gave me that opportunity that i had at the tigers was to to become a, a player of stature in back row yeah totally so i said yep this is the club i want to i want to play at yeah okay and so just with the tigers you definitely you tried to work it out with the tigers but yeah. it just was it got to a point where it just wasn't going to work for the club and for you personally yeah yeah it was just yeah. it, it was it was very hard um there was a lot of um a lot of meetings like i said that we had and we just we didn't see eye to eye mm. in, in terms of what was going on um the move had absolutely nothing to do with money mm. so um it wasn't a hard decision yeah okay because it was all about myself and like i said at home it wasn't working out yeah okay i would go to training i wasn't too happy i'd come home i wasn't happy yeah and how it didn't affect my football i have absolutely no clue yeah okay but i wasn't going to run the risk of that happening again and yeah. again because at the end of the day whether you play footy campy or not mate your happiness and your health is the main thing. Oh, absolutely. You know totally. what I mean? Oh, man. I mean, there's people playing footy right now that are really unhappy, That people that have nothing, that are stoked and loving life. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you don't, don't have to go into detail, but was there a lot of misinformation in the media that what just wasn't true? Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. Yeah. Um, I was painted out to be the villain, mm. which is understandable because no player is bigger than the club. Yeah. I don't want anybody at the Tigers to think that I thought I was bigger than the club or anything like that. Mm. Was not that was not the case. Yeah, okay. But um yeah, do I blame them? No, because I gotta protect their brand. Yeah. And that that's that's fine by me. It's footy's footy. Footy's footy. It's happen, I, yeah. I, I've grown up a lot. Yeah. Um and I know that with football clubs there can be a lot of what a shit talk. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to, to leave on good terms mm. and knowing that I every single time I put on that West Tigers jersey, I put my best foot forward. Yeah, totally. totally. I played the best I possibly could. Mm. I, I had the best interest for the club every time that I, I, I laced a boot. Mm. And um, 
I've still got some some good friends, yeah. some good memories there, mm. and um, it's something that I'm very proud of. Mm. Yeah. And um, I'll never try and remove that from my memory or, or, or my or my career because that played a big part. Yeah, it played, totally. a, it played a big part. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for that club for giving me an opportunity and, yeah. and the people that I got to to meet. Mm. But um, yeah, obviously some things don't work out. Mm. And um, yeah, but I always yeah always appreciate those moments. Yeah, it's um, footy. Footy is it's such it's so complicated. The whole business of footy and and the, you know contracts and team environments. It is a it's there's so many moving parts. You almost sometimes think like, how does a club even fucking function? Sometimes you know yeah. you've got like you've got the business side of things. You've got the club, as you said, like the, no player is bigger than the club. That's yeah. totally true. And I think most players know that. Most yeah. people understand that. But sometimes like you've got the business, you have got the club, you got the team. So the team needs to be bonded like brothers, but then you got the business. So, you know, it's just so many moving parts. Um, okay, so you get to Para, and it seemed like from the get go, you, you, it's like you had a refresh. Like your mind just seemed to be refreshed. It seemed was that the the feeling when you got there that that you just felt fresh. Yeah, I felt like the weight's off my shoulders now. Mm. I can just enjoy playing rugby league. Yeah, and that like that enjoy part. That's 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 big mm. because. Having a year of struggle, not because of winning and losing, not be like it was just it was just a hard, a very hard year personally. Mm. And waking up every day doing what I did in 2019, mm. it was it was a bit of a burden. Yeah, and it it, it played a just a, a draining part in my life. And to be able to move on and feel that I've got all that weight off my shoulders, totally. and I can just focus on just enjoying playing football, enjoying living as Ryan Madison, yeah. enjoy a going to church, being in faith, mm. doing all that. It just, I felt whole again Okay. until COVID came and locked me in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID comes, there is so good. Um, that's, that's, fuck, mate, what a weird year. And it's still oh, around. I know, I know. So you, could, you guys don't have to go on a bubble again this year at the moment? Not at the moment, not at the moment. So going to Brisbane in a couple of weeks' time, yeah. it's the normal procedure. So you would go up, you would, you would fly yeah. the day before, Play the next day, stay that night. Oh, how good's home. that? So just you, you've got you've got a bit of a bit of scheduling, which feels good. Like yeah. you've got you've got your downtime. You've got yeah, a bit of totally. Yeah, you got all that. People back, don't so. realize like getting up at four or five in the morning and flying day of games yeah. takes it out of you. Yeah, it would especially massively, like two yeah. o'clock games in the Arvo on that three o'clock. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, um, so you get to Para and and was it? How different was the place compared to 2015 to now? Because as you said, Massive. okay, so just a complete overhaul. Massive. Yeah. Well, and that was one of the things I said to Brad. I said, you've done an awesome, awesome role mm. in changing the dynamic and the club culture mm. from 2015 to 2020. Mm. Well, so a five-year gap difference and what he done, mate, hat off to him. Yeah, mate, he's... Um, as I said, like there were, there were times... Like you weren't even... A, I mean, Eels weren't even a top eight side for many years... Or they were just scraping and whatever. Now, yeah. now you're considered a failure if you don't make, you know, either the grand final or the game before the grand final. You know, so it shows you how far the club has come. Yeah. Um. And so, what do you? So, so this is this is the year that you made the Origin squad. Two thousand. No, no, that was Tigers. Tigers. Yeah. Oh, so walk us through that. So you get named in the squad for Tigers. What was that like? Yeah, it was yeah pretty surreal to be honest. Yeah. Um, like New South Wales, Queensland, though, that, that that rivalry, playing for your state. That's massive. Yeah, totally. And just to be a part of that squad, I was thinking, wow, this is so cool. Yeah, totally. And um, I was reunited with the Roosters boys and, and, yeah, and yeah. some of that, so it just felt like it felt like home, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, and so when you walked into camp, what was that like? Like I'd seen all the boys and Freddie would have been there. Yeah, Freddie would have yeah, been Freddie there. Yeah, Freddie was there, yeah. No, it was, it was pretty – Like I, I didn't realise how um, action-packed the week is. Really? Like I didn't even play. I'm thinking, geez, this is tiring. Oh really? This is very tiring. Wow, wow. Like all the like the promos and all the stuff the boys had to do. Yeah. And then on top of that, all that the the emotional build up of state versus state. Mm. We like we gotta get this win. Yeah, totally. And I'm thinking, wow, this is unbelievable. It's like pressure, pressure. Pressure, yeah. And I'm just thinking, mate, one day I'd love I'd love to put on that sky blue jersey, but yeah. until then, like, God willing, then yeah. If it happens, it happens. If it's not, I just keep playing good club footy and yep. um, yeah. But seeing that the inside of all that, mm. they were so cool. Yeah, it, ma it, ma it makes you want to play. It Absolutely. Makes you, yeah. Is there who did you who did you meet there that was um, either the MVP or the funniest or 
single character? Um, it was actually funny because um, each 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 um each game we had like different eighteenth man people. Mm. So me and Rads were the first for the first game, mm. and then um, the second game Roosters had a a club game, so he couldn't Rads couldn't do it. Yeah, okay. So then um, Gutho. Oh yeah, Gutho. Gutho coming. was the the eighteenth man with me that 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 game game too. Yeah, and. It was just so funny, like room with Guth, like thinking about it now that we're teammates now. Yeah, hundred percent. But before it, we were roomies, and it was just, it was just full of banter and just <laughs> trying to get the boys pumped up. Yeah, yeah. And the eighteenth man, you got to get the boys oh, pumped up. You got to bring the and I was eighteenth man. Yeah, and I remember Tyson from Brazil had a sore neck yeah. the day of the game. No way. And I got a tap on the shoulder saying, "Mate, you might play here." Oh. I'm going. Are you joking? We're in Perth. I'm <laughs> yeah. going. Are you joking? And um, I rolled my ankle. Oh Captain's run the day before. God. I'm going because I, I didn't think I was going to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I rolled my ankle, didn't say anything. And then they said, Oh, you might be playing. Oh, man. I'm going to Gutho. I said, I won't be playing here. <laughs> so he goes, Okay, okay, what are we going to do? He, he needed to get dress shoes because we didn't, he didn't have dress shoes. Oh, really? So I go, All right, we'll go get dress shoes. So we went to go get dress shoes, yep. come back. I said, I've got to get physio. So I'm getting physio. He goes, What do you normally do before a game? And we're thinking, I don't know, you might be playing here, so yeah, going, what, do we do? what do we do? You know what I mean? I'm thinking, mm. how cool is this? I call my mum, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to be able to fly here, it's in yep. Perth, you know yep. what I mean? Yep. Um, I said, oh, I quickly give him a call. Mm. Hey mum, got to tap on the shoulder. Brazil might not play, but I think he will, I think he will play. Yeah. But in the bottom of the back of my head, I'm thinking, I might be playing here. Yeah, I'll be playing here, wow. But um, in the sheds, I don't know what Frizzell done. Bought a new neck or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he was flying, he was sweet. And I'm going, oh. Was I glad? I don't know. Like I wasn't 100 percent right. Yeah, totally. But adrenaline could, probably could have got me through. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But for, for Zell, he killed that game. He yeah. actually killed that game. So I was so stoked that he played. Yeah, totally. It's but, um, it's a weird thing because like you you want to play, but also you want him to be sweet. Yeah. You don't want him to be injured. So yeah. it's like this weird kind of because he hurt he's hurt his neck just by picking up his kid. No way. He his, and then he's he, twinged it. Then yeah. Then he tweaked his neck. I'm going, mate. He's done all the preparation. I want him to play. Yeah, totally. You know I mean? Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that was the closest I came. Coach is going, wow, that's uh, <laughs> Could you imagine if you had have had, like, because as well, your head's a bit off too. You're not yeah. preparing the normal, like, the normal way you prepare. You go on to buy shoes. You don't know whether to call your mom. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, you want to be fully in the zone when you're about to play. Yeah. Oregon. But I would, have, I would have taken it for sure, bro. Yeah, 100%. I would have taken that for sure. Um, um, so, you get to, so what about when you get to para training? Who's the biggest pest in the para side? <sighs> You know what? There's a, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of people a lot putting, of pests there. I reckon putting shit on a lot of people. You don't get away with anything. You don't get away with anything. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, yeah it's but bad. then sometimes. It's you, but to answer the question, I'll rephrase it. The person that gets picked on the most would probably be Reed. Everyone Reed. pizzles Reed, but he's probably the most. Like, everyone deep down loves him the most. Probably. Loves him. Yeah, and and he's he's a, he's a good sport. He takes it, which yeah. is good. Yeah. But um, sometimes the boys go a little bit too far. But he he's <laughs> he's very good. He's very Mate, good. He's a it. fucking good person too. Yeah, like, no, he's a legend, being. bro. He's a legend. Uh, I had him on the podcast ages ago. Doing, yeah. Does stuff with like disabled kids and that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I got nothing but respect for the Mad Dog, little Reedy. Um, who's the best? Who's the best banter though? Who who brings the most banter? Probably you got. Garth, you got Mitch. They're, they're pretty. They, they go at it though, don't they? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. They're arch nemesis when it comes to the bands. When they um when they have five coffees deep, yeah, they're oh, just wow. bouncing, bouncing off walls, off walls. Oh, bouncing no. off walls. Yeah, yuck. But, um, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. and it's just rubbish. It's yeah. just absolutely rubbish. But it's just <laughs> in the morning at like five thirty, six o'clock start. Yeah, you need that. Oh, 100 percent. Everyone's that, heads like Ugh. you need that, and yeah. that's. And like you, you actually get energy from going into that place. You could be so tired. Yeah. You're walking down into that room. Once you go into that room and you hear one boy's voice. Yeah. You're, you're a light. You're yeah. like, all right, we're on here. Totally true, eh, bro. You need the no. And I, locker room guys are so important, bro. Because if you don't have them, your heads, everyone's just depressed because they're like, man, yeah. I'm about to get towel up. Yeah, hey, hey, you can't oh. think about that, eh? Oh my god. Okay, so, um, what's what do you reckon been your most me- outside the grand final? What's been your most memorable game of your career? Do you think? Well, you you have to go debut. Yeah, hundred percent. You have to go debut Anzac Day. That what was, about someone that you played against that you were like that? He was tough, or he was that was a fucking hard game. Like he was coming all day. Um, I remember it might have been the year I debuted. We're versing, we're versing. Might have been Storm, Kevin Proctor. Just I don't know. It was just one game that he just. We weren't doing anything right. Yep. And Melbourne were just doing everything right. Yep. And Kevin just 
it was just it was just it was just put on a clinic. Really? Wow. And like I I'm just going, mate, this bloke he's just mong strength. Yeah, he is strong. Yeah. I know he's strong. Yeah, so and he's got the same man- manager as myself. Yep. And um yeah, it was just yeah, it was just very funny. Mate, he's he um he's a clinic. gun. He had a good year last year. Yeah, no. Nah. Um who what about backs wise? Who's the biggest punish to tackle? Toughest to tackle, probably Tedesco. Is he as freakish at training as he is on the field? You know what? Do you know who? That Brian Toto, he's just... Oh, yeah, he is good, eh? He's good. He's yeah. just... I remember because that was the most recent game I played on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. And he's just skipping heads and he's just bouncing off walls. and Great footwork, strong. Strong and he's so close to the ground. It's like... I can't imagine what tackling Matt Utah would have been like. Oh, bro. 100%. But like... Yeah. It looks similar to that. Yep. Yeah. And But he, he's probably a bit more... A bit more agile than yeah. Utah, whereas Utah's probably a bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, remember Taniela Tuaki? Oh, mate. Imagine trying to tackle him. <laughs> he was a beast. <laughs> hey, oh, <laughs> mate, he was beast mode, man. Oh, my God. Um, okay, so going into this year, what, what, you don't have to say everything you've written down as goals, but what, what, are, what goals can you reveal to us that are on your goal sheet this year? So I've gone, I've really looked into um, goal setting now. Yeah. So now I've got... Um, performance goals mm. and outcome goals so performance goals are day ones that i do daily or weekly oh, really? wow. that are more getting me to that outcome where mm. outcome goals were what i used to just do and they're just they're tickable ones yeah, you know okay. what i mean like win a grand final tick mm. stuff like that mm. so um obviously you, you go you, you try and set the outcome goals to be ones that even think you, you might not even be able to reach you know yeah, what I mean? okay. yeah so yeah, obviously winning a comp has been one of my goals ever since I've won one. Mm. And to chase that high, I, w- I want to do another, I want to do I want to do it again. Yep, okay. It was, just, it was an unbelievable feeling. Mm. Yep. So yeah, we, obviously I want to win a comp. Yep. Um, obviously to put on that sky blue jersey would be unreal feeling to do that. Mm. Becoming so close to doing that and then having that feeling of, oh, well now it's in my hand. So mm. got to play my best football, which is going to be for, for Parramatta. So. I want to play my best football this year. Yep. Um, and then I've got outside rugby league goals as well. So I never used to be so in-depth with all this now. Yeah. So now I've got – I'm an ambassador for Heroes with Ability, yep. which is a disabled um, organisation, and they're working wonders now. So I want to become more um, closely knit with them and hopefully they're going to come on, on board with Parramatta okay. so we can do more school visits and do – Holiday like holiday clinics as well for the yep. disabled kids, which would be unbelievable. Yep, totally. Um, so I, yeah, I've just got different things. I want I want to I want to start studying psychology. Oh really? Wow. So that's another goal that I've I've put down. Um, I really enjoy doing that. So do it while you're playing footy, bro, because they pay for it. Do they yeah, still hey, pay for hey, it. Yeah, you got your tea. Yeah. Hey, how good is that? I mean, yeah. I didn't take it. I didn't take advantage of none of that shit. So yeah. dumb, bro. So dumb. Um, I ask all the boys this: favorite rapper of all time. Favorite rapper. Um, probably probably Drake, bro. I'll, I'll probably Is go he? with Drake, yeah. Just because yeah, I know most he, of his stuff. He doesn't miss, bro. He hey. doesn't miss. Every time he drops, like, tell me one song he's dropped that hasn't been at least solid. Oh, and you know what? Now that it's now that TikTok's come in, yeah. Like all these artists that are rappers now, like it's like Pop Smoke. Like I come, yeah. like I know, like he's gone now, but yeah. mate, he could have been the next best thing mate he was a gun his voice was unique unbelievable Sound, sounded good TikToks, like a modern day 50 cent. tiktoks are taking t- taking all his stuff now and yeah mate yeah just so pops i like pop smoke's recent stuff that album that was produced by 50 cent was yeah so it was oh, a good yeah, album yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real good album unbelievable man so yeah i feel i feel sorry for him mate um, yeah, it was a robbery apparently he put his address on online accidentally or yeah. something like that they robbed him and yeah, anyway that's sad eh? Ice, that's rubbish it's not worth it it's just not worth it all that chit chat and all that car- it's just like who cares oh, no, you know what no, i mean no, like no. all the like tough like, internet stuff i'm not saying he was just like that but that yeah. that gang lifestyle i know yeah very different in america very different but the yeah. stuff that i see here i'm like guys like it doesn't get you anywhere oh, being, no. a, being it just doesn't work doesn't it work anyway um favorite movie of all time favorite movie favorite movie um that's a tough one bro what first came to your mind when you thought of it? Harry Potter. Harry Potter, mate. That's a classic. Harry Potter. I just I, I done the um the movie marathon. Yeah, same with, with, with my same. missus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was big, bro. That was big. That bro, was big. Did you do you feel sad when it ends? Mate, I'm thinking surely there's more. Yes, because like I feel like we've gone on this journey together. Yeah. And like that's what we okay, like 
you know, we go to bed a bit later. I'll probably, I don't go to bed till about one in the morning every wow. night, but um, I'm more of a night person than a morning person. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you get to the point where you're like, all right, it's 10 o'clock or whatever the time is, time to, we get together, we watch a movie. And then oh, that okay. goes. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, fuck, man. Like, we want to watch the next one. Yeah, no, I want to watch the fucking. Yeah, I miss that. Like anyway, Harry bro, Potter, bro. That was massive. Mate, Harry Potter, gun. I hope that. I don't want them to remake it, though. Because, like, yeah, it's no, too no, no, gun. No. Like, it's too. I, I know I sound like an old person, just like, that always doesn't want. You know, you never want the remakes to be made. Yeah. But I just feel like Harry Potter was so well done. How do you top that? You can't. But you know what? Thinking about the lady, what's her name in Done It? JK uh, Rowling? Yeah, yep, yep. How do you even contemplate having that story in your head? Oh, mate. How do you do crazy. that? Crazy. What she managed to achieve it was incredible. And have you heard her story? No. Like she was broke. Her, I think her husband left her. She was living in this fucking shoebox of apartment, fully depressed, no money. And that's where she wrote Harry Potter. Exactly. Yeah, go on YouTube. You can see her story. It's incredible. Yeah. And she takes she like takes the, the camera crew back to her old house. That they, they, The person that lives there now let her do it. Yeah. And she goes into it and it's a shoebox, bro. And she like starts crying because she's like, man. They're like, why are you crying? And she's like, because I was so depressed and sad here. And that's so that, was, like, that was her like her escape, eh? Yeah, 100%. She was escaping into another world. Um, incredible story, her. And because she's, she's very vocal. Like she's a bit different now. Obviously, as you get that successful, things change. But yeah, yeah. it's an incredible story. But thank you so much for coming on, brother. Uh, I think eels are in for a big year. I think eels are in for a big year. So, thanks for having me, bro. Thank you. Boom. Thanks, keys.